So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kim, for the great in, uh, presentation. So now I'm going to talk about the common clinical deficiencies in ANGELS containing comparative clinical endpoint studies. Uh, my name is Ying Fan, and I'm from uh, Division of Clinical Review in Office of Safety and Clinical Evaluation in OGD. So the objective of my talk today First is to understand the goal and the study design of a comparative clinical endpoint by equivalent study, also known as the CCEPBE study, and irritation, sensitization, and adhesion study, also known as the ISA studies. And second is to get familiar with the common deficiencies in the CCEPBE study and ISA studies. And the third is to be aware of the relevant guidances for the CCEPBE study and ISA studies. So now I'm going to give an overview of the comparative clinical endpoint by equivalent study. In order for us to understand the concept of the CCEPBE study, first we need to understand the concept of the generic. So what is the generic? In order for a generic get approved, you need to demonstrate the pharmaceutical equivalence, bioequivalence, therapeutic equivalence, and need to have the same quality standards to the brand name drug products. So when the generic drug products get approved, it has the same active ingredient, strength, dosage form, and the routes of administration to the brand name drug products. And it is also has absence of the significant difference in the rate and extent to which the active ingredient becomes available uh, at the site of action. And also need to, and it will have the same safety and efficacy to the brand name drug products when used in the indicated population according to the label recommendations. So these standards are the results of the Drug Price Competition and Patent Restoration Act, which is also known as the Hatch-Waxman Amendments in 1984. So in addition to the standards that I mentioned to the previous slide, the generic approval also needs to be based on scientific considerations and the minimizing duplicative testing. So what is the ANDA versus the NDA? ANDA is the abbreviated new drug application, and it is the application for approval of a generic drug products, and need to demonstrate a bioequivalence and a pharmaceutical equivalence, and it relies on FDA findings of safety and efficacy data from NDA. And for the NDA, it is the new drug application, and it is the application for approval of a brand name drug product and it need to demonstrate the safety and effectiveness of the drug product. So in terms of the review process for the NDA and ANDA, you can see that animal studies, clinical studies, and the bioavailability are replaced by bioequivalence in the ANDA. So what is the bioequivalence? The two drug products will be considered bioequivalent drug products if they are pharmaceutical equivalents of pharmaceutical alternatives whose rate and extent of absorption do not show a significant difference when administered at the same molar dose of the active moiety under similar experimental conditions, either single dose or multiple dose. And for the drug products that are not intended to be absorbed into the bloodstream, bioequivalence may be demonstrated by scientifically valid methods that are expected to detect a significant difference between the drug and the listed drug in the safety and the therapeutic effects. So how to establish bioequivalence then? There are multiple study types to establish bioequivalence, such as the in vitro testing, pharmacokinetic PK study, pharmacodynamic PD study, comparative clinical endpoint bioequivalence study, and the weight of evidence approach. So the comparative clinical endpoint bioequivalence study is the least sensitive, least reproducible of general approach for demonstrated bioequivalence. So what is the comparative clinical endpoint bioequivalence study then? It is a comparative clinical study in humans that can determine the bioequivalence of dosage forms intended to deliver the same active moiety at the, an equivalent rate and extent to the size of activity. And it may be applied to dosage forms intended to deliver the active moiety locally 
forms that are not intended to be absorbed or drug products for which traditional PK studies are not feasible. So when to do our comparative clinical endpoint by equivalent study? And those studies for those drug products have a negligible systemic uptake, and there is no identified PD measure, and the site of action is local. And examples such as the topical drug products for the skin, nasal spray for the nose, and local acting GI tract products. In terms of the study design, the goal is to demonstrate the two products, generic test.t and the reference products are on B by equivalence, so that the generic can be substituted for the reference drug product. And the study design, it is a blinded, randomized, parallel study, and to use the lowest dose possible to detect more sensitive response to formulation differences, and to show the bi therapeutic effects of the generic and the reference drug products. And also need to show both the generic drug products and the reference drug products are superior to the effect of placebo. So we need to make sure that the two products have the same clinical effect and the safety profile when given to patient under the same conditions. So in terms of the study design, we need to consider multiple factors such as the dose, target population, target treatment indication, primary endpoint, assessment, time of assessment, and a statistical analysis. And these are the relevant guidances that I would highly recommend that you check before you conduct the study or submit your ANDAS. So the first is a product-specific guidance, we also call the PSG, which have the detailed and the specific recommendation for each drug product. And the second is the ENDA submission amendment to the ENDA under GUDUFA. It includes the major deficiencies we identify in the ENDA submissions. And the third is the ENDA submission refused to receive standard guidance, which included refused to receive deficiencies that we identified in the ENDA submissions. So now I'm going to give an overview of the irritation, sensitization, and adhesion studies. So what is the skin irritation? It is a local arising reaction of the affected skin tissue and appears shortly after stimulation. It is caused by a local inflammatory reaction involving the innate immune system of the skin tissue. Whereas the skin sensitization reaction, it refers to an allergic skin reaction to substance resulting from previous exposure. And it is usually characterized by redness, swelling, and itching. The goal of the ISA study is to demonstrate the irritation, sensitization potential, and adhesion performance of proposed generic transdermal or topical drug delivery system, TDS, is not worse than the reference TDS by using the non-FURI test. So these are the regulatory history for evaluating the adhesion, irritation, sensitization recommendations. So first, we publish the general adhesion guidance in June 2016, and the first revision was published in October 2018, which is together published the new irritation and the sensitization guidance. And in April 2023, the second revision of the adhesion guidance and the first revision of the IS guidance were published. And these two guidances give a general study design and the statistical analysis method for adhesion, irritation, and sensitization evaluation recommendations. And the third is the product-specific guidance. After those two general guidances were published in October 2018, so we updated all the TDS PSGs. In terms of the study design, to, evaluating, to evaluate the irritation and the sensitization potential, we recommend that you conduct combined irritation and sensitization study. It is an evaluator-blinded, randomized study, which includes 21 days of induction phase, 14 to 17 days of rest period, five days of challenge phase, and rechallenge phase if needed. And the treatment arms, we recommend to be marketed generic and reference products, and if it has a safety concern for conducting normal irritation and sensitization study for some drug products, we recommend that you use the vehicle TDS and a positive control TDS, which produces mild irritation. 
And in general, a subject's body movement should not be restricted during the study. And for products with wear period of equal or greater than 24 hours, we recommend that subjects be permitted to bath or shower routinely during the study in a manner consistent with the label use of the IOD. And the TDS should not be protected from direct exposure to water during such routine activities. And to evaluate the adhesion performance, we recommend you either conduct adhesion alone study or combine adhesion PK study. So it is a single dose randomized two treatment to period crossover study and the treatment arms we recommend is, is the to be marketed generic and reference products and the duration is the maximum label duration of the wear of the reference product. So in general, the subject should not be allowed to freely conduct normal activities in the study unit or at home and may reasonably be expected to occur during the label duration of use for the products. And for the products with wear period up or greater than 24 hours, we recommend the subjects be permitted to bath or shower routinely during the study and in a manner consistent with the label use of ILD and that a TDS should not be protected from the direct exposure to water during such routine activities. These are the relevant guidances that I would highly recommend that you check before you conduct your ISA study or submit your ENDA. So which include the product specific guidance, the general guidance for the adhesion and the general guidance for the irritation and the sensation specifically. And now I'm going to talk about the common deficiencies identified in the review of the CCEPBE and ISA studies. So this part, pie chart shows the reasons that we sent out for the easily correctable deficiency ECD or information request IR from 2014 to 2024. And you can see the clarification, justification, missing information, each represents about 46% for all the ECD and IR we sent out. And followed by the formulation related issues, which is about 8%. So I'm going to talk about each category one by one because to understand those ECD or IR is very important for you to prevent the review delay um, and also to improve the quality of your submission. So for the clarification and justification, it includes study days, rescue information, different from guidance recommendation and inconsistent information. So for the study days, we will recommend that you provide a study day in addition to the calendar day for the concomitant medication data sets and adverse event data sets. And study day means the day during the study, which you can see on the right side, two boxes here represents the day during the study for the two data sets. These information are very important for us to evaluate the concomitant medication violation and whether the AE is allowed during the study. So for the concomitant medication, we highly recommend that you submit all the medication the subjects took, especially for those medication that could potentially impact the primary endpoint assessment for your investigational drug product. So for the rescue medication, we know some drug products need to need rescue medication. So if there's any subjects took med rescue medication during the study, we highly recommend that you provide a separate data sets and in, for each rescue medication use, we would highly recommend that you provide a separate listing or separate row. So we would like for you to provide the drug name, dose, the date and time when the drug was taken. And in addition to the calendar date, we also recommend that you provide a study date. So here are the two examples that if it's different from the guidance recommendations. So first is if you use a different scales as recommend to the guidance, we recommend that you convert to the scales that guidance recommended and submit a study result. And the second, if the TDS moved before reaching the excessive irritation score or different as you predefined in the protocol, we recommend that you provide explanation when it happens. And the second category is the missing information, which include the missing documents and the missing data sets and data definition files. If there's any subject get pregnant during the study, 
we recommend that you provide the outcome of the pregnancy and attempts to obtain follow-up information. And if there's any revision that you made for the study protocol, we recommend that you provide all versions, including dates, and also summarize the differences between versions. And we also recommend that you provide IRB approval forms and financial disclosure forms. And for the missing data sets and data definition files, here are some examples that we highly recommend that you provide is the data sets in X, S, SARS XPT formats, such as the adverse events, concomitant medications, rescue medications if applicable, medical history, and reasons for subjects discontinuation from the study. And also remember to submit the data definition files for all variables. And the third category is the formulation related issues we would like for you to provide a formulation for tests and placebo and the justification of inactive ingredients if different than the reference listed drug products and the manufacturing expiration date and lot of batch number for your drug products. And also the clarification on whether to be marked the formulation was used in the studies. So to summarize my talk today, first is to understand the goal and the study design of the CCEPBE study and ISA studies. And the second is to use the product specific guidance or recommendations. Third, other approach may be acceptable, but require justification. And the last but not least is to provide justification, clarification, or other information in original and submission. So here are all the references that I mentioned in my talk. So we can go to the challenge questions. So the first question, to minimize delay of review process of ENDAS that may delay approval of generic drug products, applicants are strongly encouraged to submit all relevant information in the original ENDAS submission, including A, clinical study protocol, including all revisions, B, pregnant information and follow-up information if applicable, C, data sets, D is a formulation, E is all of above. Which one you think is correct? Yes, E is the correct answer. So the second question, which of the following guidances will be helpful to check before conducting irritation, sensitization, and adhesion study? So the first is the general guidance for the irritation and sensitization. Second is the general guidance for the adhesion. C is a product specific guidance of the study drug products. And D is off above. Yes, D off above is the correct answer. So that's all I have today. And thank you for your attention. And then I'm happy to answer any questions that you have in the following panel discussion section. So I'm not going to hand over to Rory.